good morning, my hearties. A very good morning to you. And a very warm welcome to our Tuesday morning pop-up. Easter Monday's gone. Easter's actually gone. And we are now into the next phase. Welcome, 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 I say. If you're not familiar with me, I'm the world's top broadcaster and the first lord of the internet. And we are, of course, live for our one-hour pop-up this morning. That's uh, one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment, not just for one nation, but for all nations. Welcome, 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 I say. Who have we got here? A very good turnout to start. Uh, we've got uh, Thomas Peden's joined us. Excellent, Thomas. Brian Hall's watching. And uh, Ian Swanston's watching this morning. Morning, Ian. Lovely to have you with us. I hope you are well. One of our great broadcasters. And uh, who else have we got? Kareem is watching. Good morning, Dinky Doo, says Brian Hall. Good morning, Brian. And... Uh, Kareem says, good morning, Scotty McClue. Excellent to have you with us. Wonderful. I'm just sort of moving you up all the time to get everything right. I hope the lighting's all right. A little bit of a shadow just to the left there. I don't know if that's helping. Hopefully it is. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, Scotty, says Paul Mack. Hi, Paul. And uh, there's Marcella Foyer. Gordon Robertson's watching. Thank you, Gordon. Loved your humor. So there you are. Adam Spibby Higson is watching. Gordon Sterling's watching. Excellent, Gordon. Now, Gordon, you haven't answered my question yesterday, and that was about the A135. Would it be a suitable vehicle for uh, McClue for public engagements? Uh, Mark and Little Max in Liverpool. Good morning, all, and stay safe. Good morning, Mark. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, we love the bones of you guys. And welcome from Liverpool. Lovely to have you with us. Great stuff. Great, Mark. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, good morning, Scotty, says Thomas. Trish McLaren, good morning, Scotty. And two lovely wee kisses. Good morning, Trish. Lovely to have you with us. And dinky do, as we say. Um, Susan Forrest watching. Excellent, Susan. Thank you. This is a lockdown essential, says Thomas Peden. Thomas, I thank you very much. Is it Peden or Pedden? Which do you prefer? Do say. Uh, dinky do, Scotty. Dinky do, Nicky. Lovely to have you with us, Nicky Graham. Welcome, 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 guys. John Gaffney's watching. Um, Trish McClown says, Dinky do, how are you? I am remarkable, Trish. When I think about it, when I think of all the things I've done in my life, and I think um, how much laughter and fun I have had, one of the things that kind of irritates me and might irritate all of you is when people tell you how hard they've worked. And I've no time for it. So when somebody's saying, oh, I bet you don't realize just how hard I've worked, I like to just say, well, I've never done a hands, Tom. Oh, it's great fun, isn't it? Paul Callahan, good morning. Good morning, says Thomas. It's Peden. Good, good man. Ruth Terry says, good morning. <coughs> Pardon me, don't worry about the cough. Had it for 20 years. Morning from Milton of Campsie. Now, that is a gorgeous part of the world. That will be stunning this morning. Milton of Campsie. And am I right in saying you're not very far from Lennoxton? There we go. Uh, Dinky Doo Scotty says Jack. Jack Mellies, welcome, welcome. A birthday shout out for Mick Quigley Scotty. Mick Quigley, happy birthday. That's from Jim Panton. Gordon Robinson, good morning, Scotty. I'm joining you from Byers Road this morning, having a bit of exercise whilst out at the shops. I love, love Byers Road. Um, it's quiet out there, and those who are keeping their distance from me, um, ach, they'd be doing that anyway, God. <laughs> Probably more due to my ugly mug than the pandemic. Nothing ugly about you, sir. Very handsome chap. Uh, good morning to Scotty from the beautiful Stonehaven. Callum McSwan. I adore Stonehaven. 
I um, used to have a doorstop which was a gorgeous round boulder that had been brought from the beach. Wonderful stuff at Stonehaven. So there you are. What a gorgeous place in the harbour. The lovely Susie New is watching. What a top lady. Susie New, dinky doo. To you, I say. Alan McGee is watching. Morning, Scotty. How are you, says Jean Smith. Wonderful, Jean. Just excellent this morning. And I think I send love and strength to every single person, right, out there to the world. Um, a lot of people saying... This should be on national television in the morning. And I have to agree. I'm not blowing any trumpets, but there's nothing on television or radio like this. And uh, it's great that we've got it on social media platforms. Don't get me wrong. And it's great that people can see internationally. They're watching Canada and uh, America and New Zealand and Australia the Philippines, where people are from the Philippines the other day, Spain, France, Germany, you know, you name it, people can see you here. Take the bonnet off, Scotty. Alan McGee. You don't ask a gentleman to take his bonnet off. My goodness me. Stephen McMahon, good morning, Scotty, from Baloch. Dinky do. We love Baloch. And uh, John Jones is watching. Can we have a thank you to Derek Stream, please? says Thomas, yes, we can. Uh, he did a raffle to raise funds for his local food bank and raised £374. <coughs> Wonderful stuff. We like that. Molly Scotty, how are you coping with the lockdown? A wee shout out for us Aloha boys, Alan Baird. Do I adore Aloha? What a fine, fine old tune. And I know it well because... 30 years ago, in June, in about another eight weeks, I set up the radio station for Stirling and Aloha and Central Scotland, and it's still on air and going good style. Central FM Radio, dinky do I say, fabulous people. Darren Stevens is watching. Hi, Scotty from Cardonald. Take care, gorgeous, says Alexa Hamill. Alexa you princess, I thank you. How wonderful. Kurt Donald, we love it. Uh, very nice name check. Very swift name check. Good morning. Um, thank you very much. No problem at all. Susie New, what a top lady. There we are. Uh, McClure, I can only find one Austin A135 for sale at 10K. Is your budget still 300 Maybe around the 200 mark, Gordon, if they would, if they would haggle. You could perhaps make a cheeky bid, but don't hurt the guy's feelings. Listen, why would the guy's feelings be hurt if it was going to Scotty him a clue? Oh my goodness me. What's more likely to, uh, to hurt your feelings is when, when you get into the garage? <laughs> <laughs> Alan Bale's watching, dinky do, Stephen McMahon. What is it they always say when they're selling you one of these? He goes, a great old motor. You know, she should she should start. She just, uh, she just cold. <laughs> As if to say, she started 10 minutes before you arrived and you feel the bonnet. The bonnet's red hot. Good morning, Scotty. Dinky do from Sunny Bannock, says Steve McMahon. Dinky do. High five, Darren. High five, I say. High five to every single one of you. The bonus part of Scotty's PPE, says Gordon Robertson. Gordon, that was a lovely thing you said when they'd, um, they'd uh, projected the light onto the statue um, in, uh, in Brazil. And you said they should project Scotty McClure up there. I'm watching you from Ibrox in Glasgow, Scotty, says Nicky Graham. Nicky? I have heard of Ibrox. When I was doing the Clyde Cayley, we started uh, at six o'clock at Radio Clyde, six to eight. And I once made a huge, huge error of judgment. I like to be early. And I thought to myself, right, so if I leave the house about half four, quarter to five, and uh, get myself over to Clyde Bank via the tunnel, I'll pop along the old Govan Road. Now, how daft am I? You know what's coming, Nicky. There was a game on, an old firm game on. 
So I just had to just sit there in traffic as the minutes tick by. Fortunately, I did make it. But, oh, can you imagine? So I thought, no, it'll not take me that to go to Clyde Bank. I'm gutted. I can't go fishing, says Alan Baird. The wonderful Alex Hall is watching. One of our most talented, talented uh, actresses and phone-in presenters. Absolute top lady. Good morning, Alex. Lovely, lovely to have you with us. So there we are. I never thought I'd actually go into a bank with a mask on and ask for money till yesterday. I know, absolutely. I can tell you places when you used to try and buy a pair of tights. They asked you what head size you were. Cheers, Scotty boy. Cheers, Alan Beard. Lovely to have you with us. Alan Hall's watching. Um, so there we go. Kareem says, what do you think about the meeting? on Thursday regarding the lockdown review. Will it continue or will it be relaxed? Well, we need to find out what's best for the people. I was getting accused of scaremongering because I'd shared a piece from a newspaper that said it could go on for a year or something like that. And people were doing the like, what are you sharing this for? And I said, look, look, you know, I'm trying to save lives here. And said, I said, oh, people are wanting to get out. And I said, no, what's the alternative? So I just sent back, you know, would you rather have that or would you rather have life? You know, people were going to get a bit daft. And people still not obeying the social distancing measures. They should be in single file. But instead, they're in a long line, which takes up half the payment. You have the payment, but I know that's predictive text. Sharing, guys, everybody must share. What is going on here? We need to share. And they uh, spread the word, tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10, that Scotty McClue's live on Facebook Live. And Logan Kerr, hi, Scotty. I'm in isolation in Australia. I travelled back from Scotland five days ago, strange times. Your friend Anne and Logan Kerr, we love that you're watching Scotty McClure live on Facebook Live in Oz. And uh, if you can share it to everybody in Oz. Andrew Kerr's watching. We must share, guys. Come on. Come on, get sharing. I've never had this in my life. I get so distracted with all you wonderful people. Um... <clears throat> Paul Mac, did you have a life of crime before hitting the big time? How else would you know where to buy tights the size of your head? <laughs> well, I like to visit just ordinary people in ordinary places, you know, the kind of place where, um, you know, you, you maybe see a big sheet hanging out one of the windows of the flats that goes, Happy 30th, Grandma! You know, that sort of thing. Uh, Peter Collins watching Dinky Do. Just nipping into the pharmacy to tell them I don't need my prescription for happy pills because I've got, I've been listening to Scotty McClue. <laughs> well, why have happy pills when you are listening to Scotty McClue? Laughter is the best medicine. And I know some of you will have life threatening conditions and life shortening conditions, uh, life restricting conditions, all these sort of things, but that doesn't stop you living for the day and watching Scotty McClure. I mean, let's just remember, any of us could pop our clogs. That's the worst case scenario. All right. So there you go. And uh, I saw a bit of a very interesting bit I was reading about Lord Reith last night of the BBC, a man whose life I've studied, absolutely studied in great detail. Very interesting, and spoken to his lovely, lovely family about um, Lord Reith, uh, because he, he, he was a very troubled character in so many ways, and a very difficult character, but a wonderful, wonderful giant of industry. Uh, great industrialist, as well as starting and running the BBC. And um, it was saying, uh, it was a piece from King Lear, um, do not stretch him more than he wants to be stretched. I can't remember the exact quote. Yeah, I would need to delve into my Shakespeare cavity in my brain. But, um, you know, it, some people who have had enough of life, if they're really quite old, um, they don't want it stretched out any further, thank you. So you've got to look at that. I used to get very upset. My poor grandmother 
uh, suffered dreadfully for two years with cancer, and I thought my old Labrador was away in 15 seconds. Interesting. So, sorry, not meaning to cheer everybody up, but I'm just saying. Did you do any fishing, Scotty? Uh, I can just see a couple of flies tied to that bonnet. Yes, now there's obviously a big ritual with fisher people about hooks. I remember a guy lending me a shirt. My shirt was in the wash. He said, I'll lend you one of mine. And he lent us this fabulous shirt, and there was fishing hooks in it. And I said, do you want me to take these out? No, 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 just leave them. Scotty, tell us a joke, please. Well, as you know, I don't really know any jokes. I was standing at the central station the other day, and I just, with the whole thing, I burst into tears. And um, a policeman said, I could arrest you. I said, what for, for crying out loud? <laughs> See what I just did there? I'm still watching here in the Philippines now. It says, J. John Domasing E. Gross. J. John Domasing E. Gross, lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo, welcome from the Philippines. Hugh Beatty is watching Dinky Doo, Hugh. I threw away my old vacuum cleaner last week and I said, see ya, sucker. So there we go. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you with us, of course, everybody. Very important. I told you I've given up my job as a taxi driver, not just due to the lockdown, but because people were talking behind my back. So there we are. Now, um, share, big share, massive share, guys. Come on, everybody share, everybody share, everybody share, everybody share. Scotty McClue and say, dinky do. There we go. Right, I'll have to uh, share to the big page, the Scotty McClue big page. What do you call a bee that makes milk, says Anne Logan Kerr. A booby. Fantastic. Anybody remember Scotty McClue's Lob One Out campaign for uh, mothers to breastfeed on the buses? Hi, Scotty boys. This is Kevin Smith. Stephen Minnie, Dinky Doo, lovely to have you with us. Excellent stuff. And um, what did one mobile phone say after falling in love with another mobile phone? I'll text you. So, Stephen Minnie, thank you, dear. Lovely to have you with us. Uh, right, here we go. I'm just going to share this massively. Share. Okay, now, guys, you can see this all over America, Canada. Put that in, hashtag, share everything you possibly can. And um, there we go. So, I'm going to... Uh, Share to the page. There it goes to the big Scotty McClue page. You can all do the same. Lovely wrap. Oh, yes. Did you get my stay safe wrap? Very, very important. On TikTok. Guys, Scotty McClue is not just on Facebook and Facebook Live. We are all over the planet, all over the Internet. Get yourselves on there. Very important. I'm just going to start sharing. And as I say, if you can all do the same, that would be fantastic. So there you are. Get Alexa program to play Scotty McClure. John Lee's watching. Wonderful to have you all with us. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You liked that one, Jack, didn't you? Fantastic. Right, I've just shared. I've just let everybody know. And as I say, if you can do the same. Does anybody have access to, like, a massive group or uh, a huge amount of friends or a big sort of corporate thing that would share this stream, because that would be brilliant. That would be a real help if somebody goes, no, I can share it. I've got half a million people on my, uh, you know, that would be fantastic, guys. But I think if we all share, then it tells 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scott McClue is live streaming just for you, saying dinky do during the lockdown mornings, 10 o'clock sharp, can't beat it. Scotty, I'm five foot four inches, says Peter Conley. I've put on weight lately. I'm now 16 stone. I got invited to a wedding, left it to the last minute and into the tailors in Dumbarton High Street. I said, manage to the manager, do you have a suit on the peg that would fit me? He looked at me and said, um, if I have, sir, somebody here's for the sack. <laughs> I remember being in a shop 
and I was going out to a formal do and there was one black suit left and just as I reached for it, just in front of me, an old guy, a really fat old guy reaches over and grabs it and I never felt him grab it and then I looked and I realised it was a mirror. Oh, can you say happy birthday to Jane Peden? It will make her day since she's stuck at home, says Erin. Absolutely. Can you say happy birthday to Jane? Um, yes, I can, Erin. No problem at all. A doctor accidentally prescribes his patient a laxative instead of a coughing syrup. The patient replies, uh, Are you still coughing? says the doctor. The patient replies, No. I'm afraid to. <laughs> I always remember a guy went into the doctors in the city centre in uh, Glasgow and um, he said, uh, I wonder if you can help me. I've got a wee bit of indignation, you know, indignation. And the doctor examined him and he said, yes, you have. He says, what to do? A spoonful of Epsom, Epsom salts and a pint of water. He said, and that will help to release it. So, <laughs> guy phones the doctor the next day, says, I'm in the town centre, he said, um, did you say it was a pound of Epsom salts and a spoonful of water? He said, no, 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 he says, where are you phoning from, he says, outside where the city chambers used to be. <laughs> Don't we just love it? Mark Hampshire, Richard Mackay is watching, Dicky Doo, David Turner. Good morning, Scotty. I was out for a walk yesterday. I broke wind loudly and an old lady said, How oh, dare you break wind in front of me? I said, I'm sorry, I didn't realise it was your turn. <laughs> uh, one more shout out, please, for Sandra Foy. She's been working hard in the community with the rest of the guys from St. Augustine's in Court Bridge. We love St. Augustine's. It was on for the morning mass on Sunday morning. Uh, Karim says, the dentist says this will hurt a little. Patient says, okay. Uh, dentist says, I've been having an affair with your wife for a I met somebody coming out of the dentist one day. I said, are you all right? He went, I've just had all of my teeth out, every single one. I said, what was it like? He went, oof, never again. <laughs> I went into the dentist and he said to me, he said, you know, Scotty, your teeth are lovely. I said, oh, that's fine. He said, however, your gums will have to come out. Stop! Right, there we go. Um, more sharing, guys. We haven't even scratched the surface of the sharing, and nobody shared a group with millions of fans. So come on. There must be somebody who works for one of the big football clubs. This is Scotty. We're clear we're talking about, for goodness sake. I used to command audiences of quarter a million per half hour, a million per half hour, all these big radio stations in Manchester and Liverpool, and fantastic. Right, so let's get it out there because I've only got maybe, if I survive another 20 years of broadcasting in me, and therefore, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get my skates on. Because you know what they say, if you don't make it by the time you're 90, you'll end up on the scrap heap career-wise. Um, so what have we got here? Right, sharing in public, share to a page. We did that, didn't we? We shared to the big page. And um, what are we doing now? We're sharing to the group. Yes, and we'll share to the story as well. So I'm sharing to the Scotty McClure fan group. Everybody should have joined that. There's Louise Sullivan, one of our top broadcasters. Hi, Louise. Lovely to have you with us. And Dinky Doo. Uh, wonderful. That's what it's all about. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We were having a discussion about the best time, but I think this is a good time for Scotty McClure to pop up and say dinky-doo to every single one of you. Um, it's interesting because some days we pop up, we get several thousand viewers. Other days we pop up and there's just a few hundred at the time. And I think to myself, this must be something to do with the platform because I think it's to do with us. I'm back. I had to nip into a shop for some messages. Did I miss anything? No, Gordon, you missed uh, everything. 
Um, you didn't miss anything. You missed everything. You never, ever, ever miss a moment of Scotty McClure or you miss a moment of life. That's why. So there we go. Uh, bought the wife a new car last month, Scotty. She took out for a run and called me an hour later. Said good news and bad news about the new car. I said, give me the good news first. She said, the airbags are working. A mother asks her son, Anton, do you think I'm a bad mom? Uh, son, my name is Paul. <laughs> <laughs> You'd have been good at Still Games, Scotty. Well, I had a line if I got invited for an addition to Still Game. I had, it was a bit late now, obviously, a bit late in the day, but I had a line up my sleeve. We all go into the clansman, Jack on one side, Victor on the other, and the clansman, Bobby, Bobby says uh, to me, oh, here you are, Scotty, there is it. I say, yes, what can I get you? I say, could I have a pint of your finest, please, Bobby, uh, landlord? Is that, and I say, and for my two friends, my good friends, Jack, my good friend, Victor, nothing! <laughs> that sort of thing. Richard McCusker's watching, Dinky Doo. Mark Montgomery's watching, Dinky Doo. A mother asks us, oh yes, we've done that, what haven't we? Um, went to the doctors last week, convinced there was a moth. The doctor said, why are you knocking at my door? It's three in the morning. Said I was passing and I saw your light on. Shared, says the wonderful Louise Sullivan. Louise, thank you very much. Brothers William Henry is watching. Good morning, uh, Your Grace, I say to you. So that's the stuff. Uh, my Lord, good morning, my Lord. What do we usually address the provost as in Scotland? Uh, the Lord Mayor, there will be an official title going way back because remember, everybody watching is a good burger in Scotland. The good burgers. They are careful how you say that, I always say. Uh, the group, um, what group have we got here? Uh, Scotty McClure. Let's get some sharing done, guys. Come on, I'm getting distracted by you. You. Yes, but it is your stream. I mean, that's what it's all about. I am but a humble catalyst. Uh, you're asking what's the best time. Surely it's any time McClure's on. Gordon Robertson, you say the loveliest of things. I thank you. Very much appreciated. Or any time you're on the stream is a good time. See what I just did there, Gordon Robertson. How wonderful is that? There we go. Just sharing, bit of sharing. At least we've tried. Right? And uh, the rest of you keep sharing. Keep sharing throughout the day, guys. It's wonderful. I know you think, oh, what's my clue sending us now? She does this every hour or two, you know? Yeah. Ah. I beg your pardon. I think it's a small price to pay. Wonderful stuff, Dinky Doo. Remember, I accept applause or derision on my merits. How oh, mad am I? <laughs> Wonderful, isn't it? That's what it's all about. And also, I say to the um, programmers out there, think about getting this out during the lockdown. Scotty McClue on there. Remember, I have a very, very long pedigree. So there you are. We'll get your big audience. I'm a member of Dumbarton Memories, Scotty. 6,000 members. I've just shared Peter Conley. I can't thank you enough because I love Dumbarton, the tune of the elephant, and the elephant never forgets. Um, mind to tell the lassies to keep the draws on unless they want mere wings, says Will Paul. I think a politer way, Will Paul, would be to say, Keep their horn in their head. Marvellous stuff. Keith Watherspoon, thank you, dear. Scott McClure, what are your favourite foods, Kareem? I have so many favourite foods. I would say my favourite food is food itself. You see, I was brought up in a kind of classical way and classically educated, and you had to eat everything. So in those days, it was manners to clear your plate Nowadays, it's apparently manners to leave a wee something and just put your knife and fork beside each other. But um, no, I, I, I scoffed a lot. And my mother, I was quite spoiled because my mother made three proper meals a day. So when you went down in the morning, you used to get the shout. My father would shout, it's seven o'clock. And I thought, yeah, and 
<laughs> you know, that sort of stuff. In this kind of weather, my father would have been up at five o'clock, <coughs> pardon me, to get a couple of hours in his garden. He'd be out digging the garden and you'd see the shadows and the blackbirds hopping about and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that was that. So three lovely meals. So it's just, it's very difficult. But just what's going, you know, I'm not one of these fussy eaters that goes, oh, no, I, I, I couldn't have that. You see, it's interesting. You'll have heard people say, would you like a curry? Or would you like, oh, no, no, no. My tummy's actually not very good. That's the antithesis of the truth. Your tummy is superb. And that's why it's saying, I'm not having this particular dish. It doesn't agree with me. So stop doing yourself down with things like, oh, I'm no awful good with that. Either you have an actual allergy or, um, you know, you're superb with it. There we are. Uh, we got that one yesterday, John Jones. So it's wonderful. Uh, I wonder why the only supermarket queue in Bars Road is the most expensive store. The one at the top, I believe they have a sale on three for the price of five. <laughs> three for the price of five. We love that. You know, it was very interesting. The toilet roll people, when they thought they were onto something during the shortage and were upping the price, that was bad, bad, bad. Bad news. So there we are. There's plenty of stuff in the shops, guys. So no more panic buying. That's because I can remember toilet roll. People could hardly get rid of it. This was before it was used. You know, you would see it in the shops. You know, a nine for two seventy or whatever. And I'd always pick one up. But sure as death, as soon as you buy a toilet roll, a big, a big pack of toilet roll, and you stick it under your arm one of your pals walks up or your boss walks up to you in the street or somebody will, hello, Scotty, how are you getting on? And stands and has a conversation, not during the lockdown, not during social distancing, and you're standing there with a nine under your arm. I saw somebody with a 24, I think. Is that possible? Finished a jigsaw yesterday. Well, chuffed, only took me three weeks. And it said two to three years on the box. <laughs> Robert, excellent. I remember the missus coming back in and I was painting and I was absolutely roasting. She said, how are you? I said, oh. She said, you're sweating. I said, I know it says on the tin to put on two coats. Tracy Cunningham, do you do? Uh, McGinty McGinnis, get watching. I love steak and chips, chicken and salad. Chicken and rice is nice. So they are quite like that. These wee salads, the wee sweet tomatoes. Henry Anderson, Dinky, do lovely to have you with us. And uh, good morning, Scotty says, Call Dog. Call Dog, good morning, lovely to have you with us. Uh, shops are stowed out and stamp it food with food, plus Easter eggs are all marked down. I actually, joking apart, might get myself an Easter egg if they're reduced. So there we go. I don't know if you've seen the wonderful comedian that talks about the country's symbols, you know, like Wales is the leek and England is the rose and Scotland's the thistle. And he says, you wonder if there was maybe a stall and they were looking a stall for national symbols and the Scot came in kind of at the end and just the thistle was lying there. And he says, I was looking for a national symbol and some said, well, we've, we've just got the thistle here. And he goes, aye, is it, is it free like? <laughs> How did we get the national thistle? I know. I can tell the story. Scotty down in London with a company on a night out. I was refused entry to a nightclub because I wasn't wearing a tie. I went back to the car and put my jump leads round my neck like a bow tie. When I went back, the guy said, no, you can't come in. You can come in, but you'd better not start anything. <laughs> um, absolutely. I think we're getting these now. Nick Kershaw. Um, Thomas says, have you ever heard uh, chicken and rice from Frangus, Scotty? No, I haven't, Thomas. There's a wee luxury I've denied myself up till now. Waiters have now removed the restrictions on foie gras and quail eggs. 
says Gordon. I don't know, was there restrictions on that, or are you just teasing me? Uh, that may be a joke, folks. Hello, Scotty. I hope you've had a good day. Thomas Hamilton, having a great day. Loving the fact everybody's come and joined us for uh, Lockdown Live with Scotty McClure. So there we are. Um, Kareem's doing an advert here. Get a Marks and Spencer needs to take. Call Dog says, Dinky Do, Dinky Do, Scotty. Says Nick Kershaw. Nick, lovely to have you with us. What a top man. Delighted to have you with us. John Marshall's watching. Dinky Do, John. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm just going to do another share, guys. I'm sharing to my story, which is public. <gasps> public. Oh, how would I be live in public, oh, how would I be live on top? Oh, I'd be so nervous. Oh, mm. popping up in front of people. What if I thought people were watching? Oh, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, the wonderful Alistair King's watching. Just joined us. Hi, Alistair. Right, I shared that to a story. What else can we share, guys? Come on. There needs to be lots more sharing. Can everybody share? Right? Very important. Just keep at it. Um, I'll take you for a Franco Scotty sometimes. Portuguese piri chicken. Oh, Thomas. Sounds absolutely delightful. Morning, dinky-doo, Scotty. So there we are, dinky-doo. And uh, lovely to have you with us, Alistair. I hope all is going well. Are you homeschooling junior? So there are. And guys, can you share this at different times during the day, please? Also, go on to Scotty McClue's YouTube channel. There's 700 fabulous videos sitting there just for your education, enjoyment, edification, entertainment, and delight. You see what I just did there? A bit of alliteration. How fantastic is that? Um, yes, so do it. That's what I say. Get sharing. Uh, you'll never go wrong. I'm going to share to another group. I'm going to share to one of the big groups and see if they pick it up. If anybody else has got access to massive groups, to massive social media, if you're on Reddit, Reddit videos, Reddit television, things like that, get this shared out there because somebody was just saying, well, many of you are saying, this should be on national television, and so it should. The television companies, quite frankly, should be hanging their head in shame because they could be taking Scotty McClue live during the lockdown, and we could be taking your calls. Oh, talking of which, I have my trusty Skype. If anybody fancies a Skype, never be short, never think you can't, and uh, you can Skype Scotty McClue, Scotty.McClue is my handle. Make a note of that, Scotty.McClue. And make a note of this page, guys. It's uh, facebook.com, www.facebook.com, and then it's forward slash Scotty.McClue.9. Okay, get that out there. And um, just remember, and for anybody who thinks the mornings are samey, they're not, they're not samey at all. The mornings are, every morning is different. Every morning has its own personality. Yes, of course, we get some of the same people on. Now, who have we got here? The wonderful Brett Titswell. Hi, Scotty. Greetings from Australia again. Been buying a lot of lottery tickets lately. If they don't win, I've been punching a hole in them and hanging them in the back of the dunny door with a shortage of toilet paper. Every ticket is a winner. Yes, just be careful with them, though. They're not that large. Uh, yes, it's going okay, Scotty, but did something a wee bit different. We built a wee patio in the garden, so he now knows how to lay slabs. Do you know... That in the early days of Gordonston School in the north of Scotland, under the um, under Cut Han, the headmaster Cut Han, who had brought the school over to Scotland from Germany, and uh, he taught the pupils. He had the pupils building a lot of stuff round the place. So there's a building called Round Square, and Prince Philip 
and all the other pupils helped to lay the slabs and the cobbles around Round Square. How fantastic is that? Morning, Scotty. What did you think of Chromecast? Kevin, I haven't tried it yet. It sounds fantastic. I would need to purchase a stick. And obviously, uh, pennies are tight at the moment. If anybody fancies sticking something into PayPal, uh, paypal.com forward, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, I'll save up for a Chromecast stick. Wonderful Kenny Hyde is watching. Dinky do, Kenny. What Kenny Hyde does not know about motor cars is not worth knowing. So there we are. We might be starting live on YouTube. Somebody suggested a great title, and it's Gear Knobs, and it's for car enthusiasts. And we all get on there. Michael Farker tripped over his lace. Said your lace is done. He said, cheers. Thomas. Oh, he tripped over his lace. I said, your lace is done. He said, cheers, Thomas. It's on the box. You only have to Taiwan. <laughs> There's an Indian in Aberdeen that does the most dinky chicken jaw frizzy. It's ever been my pleasure. I'd eat it every day if it was possible. Says Michael McCulloch. Fit like Michael. Who's your dues? Welcome. What a loon. Uh, John Marshall is on about booze. I don't know. We don't have booze. We should, I wonder, should we actually cut out alcohol during lockdown? Scotty, why is this not on TV? It's the most entertaining program anywhere. These producers are missing a huge trick. It would go down fantastically on any channel at any time. Even my six-year-old likes it as it caters for all ages. Peter Conley, I once had a specialist come into a radio station and she said, I'd like to talk to Scotty McClure and interview him. She said, um, I need to know who your um, audience targets, your target audience is. And I looked at her, I said, everyone. She said, no, 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 no. I mean, all programs must have a target audience. And I said, why? And she said, well, for advertising. And I said, but surely if you have everybody, if I give you every viewer or listener, surely your salespeople can sort out who they sell to. And she just stared at me because nobody had ever challenged her. So she was used to uh, coming in and, and people saying, What's your target audience? Uh, 15 plus, 1545. All right, I'll make a note of that. And I said, everybody is the audience, you know? And I've proved it time and time again. It's not as if I've got anything to prove. We get a massive audience. Everybody loves it. Everybody wants to advertise on Scotty McClure. I'm getting approaches here. Scotty is, uh, you know, could we do some advertising with you? On your pop-up, I'm saying, no, just a pop-up, you know. We should do mechanics live, Scotty, says Alistair King. I think we could have a lot of fun. Mechanics live, is that what we call it? What did you think of Gear Knobs as a title? Uh, Thomas says, call your show full of gear. Put it on at 11 p.m. on a Saturday. Yeah, you'll be mobbed. <laughs> Absolutely. Car phone in. Would be good. Car phone in, yes. And we do it on the Skype. Does anybody want to Skype me? The Skype's live, guys, if you want to Skype me. It's there right now, Scotty.McClue on your Skype. But you need to be on my trusted list. So they are, because we had a wee, a wee idiot one night, uh, or two wee idiots, said a couple of people. And, of course, that ruined it internationally for everyone. Can you believe it? <coughs> now... Uh, so there we are. I'll get a guy to what well, Thomas is saying. I can't really mention names, Thomas. You're quite big on mentioning names. But I'll get a guy to co-host it with you. We like that. We can be the agony mechanics. Usually when I take the car down to the garage, they go, Hi, Scotty. What's up? And I say, Oh, she's kind of uh, stuttering a wee bit. And they go, What have you touched? <laughs> 
I can remember my old 4-2 Jag chocolate brown biscuit hide seats, heaven. And uh, I remember going in and I said to the guy, I said, I had to get an Allen key for that. He went, well, that's why, that's the mixture. You shouldn't have played with that. <laughs> Leave it alone. <laughs> I remember once getting a runner from the motor auctions. Yvonne Cuthill, or Yvonne Cuthill. Cuthill or Cuthill, Yvonne, how do you prefer? I like to get people's names right. Hi, Scotty. Hi, Yvonne Dinky Doo. Uh, Kelvin Allen's watching Dinky Doo. Kelvin, lovely to have you with us. And uh, I might actually do a YouTube pop-up today. I haven't done one for a while. I've been an agony mechanic for years. You see the agony when the customer has to open his wallet. I know, absolutely. And it's when you get the news. We used to, um, when I ran a lot of old cars as a youngster, you got to know the people in the parts departments. And we used to go into the parts department. And the guy, there was nothing in these days. This was even pre-microfiche. So you'd go in and you'd say, excuse me, looking for a throttle link for the Somerset. Uh, it would take it like an ironmonger used and go, ah, yes. And it was solid brass. You know, I kind of give you it in brass at Ben Island. Uh, that's shared with the, uh, the FX4. So I've got one in stock. Uh, so he knew his stock. And we'd go away and get it, and then he would come back, and then you would say, uh, she's also leaking a wee bit. I was wondering about maybe, um, you know, the, the water pump or something. Uh, all right, I'll give you a price for that. And he would go and get a thing that looked like an old, thick phone directory. He would flick it up, and then he would go, uh, so that's uh, $29.99. And uh, I thought the car's only worth 20 quid, you know. And then he'd say, and... Uh, your VAT, your VAT on top of that, they just brought in VAT. I think that was it. Was that 1969 or something? Your VAT on top of that. Are you wanting us to fit it? And the price, that would be, so you'd be uh, all in, well, you're fitting 4350. That's a very throttle leak. Uh, that's uh, how we all learn, Scotty. You'll never know if you can do it. If you don't tinker with it, absolutely, Alistair. It's just sometimes when you've tinkered with it, you think, I wish I had any. I always remember the great late Jimmy Shand, Sir James Shand. And uh, Jimmy was born, I think Jimmy was born in 1907. And um, he had a motorbike, he had a motorcycle, and he'd heard all the other guys locally saying they decoked their bike at the weekend. So he kind of asked them a wee bit about it. So I ah, just take the heat off and get a wee uh, mild copper scraper and take the carbon off it and all that and then put it all back together again. So that Saturday, Jimmy decoked his bike and um, then he started it up and it just went bang. So he said that was his first lesson. If it's running, leave it alone. There we go. And I was going to tell you, one spot a wee... Um, a wee runner from the motor auction and I got it back and a friend was helping with it and uh, he was doing some stuff and I was doing some stuff. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking the starter motor out. I said, because the, the bearings are a wee bit lazy. Uh, the Bendix is a wee bit lazy. And uh, he went, son, would you just leave it alone or we'll be left with nothing? There we are. I think he actually used a different term for nothing. Um, Liam McMurrah, oh, Kavna is watching. Liam McMurrah, didn't he do? Ian Whitelaw, Scotty, with your old cars, you must still have to pull the choke out. The young ones don't remember that. No, but this is where you got a Morris Minor for sale, and it would say one careful lady owner. And you found out she thought the choke was to hang her handbag on. That sort of stuff. There we are. Thomas, what are you doing, for goodness sake, sending all these names out? Uh, I remember them, John. Yes, absolutely. I remember my grandfather had a Muscovich. So they are spent more time in the ramp than it did in the road. Yeah, they needed a wee bit of uh, love and attention, the old Muscovich with the kind of cardboard dashboard. Uh, so there we go. Morning, Scotty. 
says Robert T. Kerr. You're an awful one for names, Thomas. So there we are. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've just joined us, Kareem was asking me there. What have we got there, Kareem? That's me home again. I'm sitting in the car watching you on my phone rather than have to stop watching when I'm taking the messages in. No, you need to watch Gordon Robertson or you will miss. There we are. Uh, Any time's a good time for me, says Yvonne. Yvonne, thank you. You didn't tell me if it's Cuthill or Cuthill. Um, Scotty, your old cars. Yes, the choke. That's right. We did. I remember my grandfather, uh, Alistair, sorry, said that morning. Morning all, Sue McMahon. What about the driving instructor's phone in, Scotty? Ah, Stephen McMahon, yes. You are traversing cautiously. Uh, the, the danger is coming from the right. Uh, Scotty, what's your worst mechanical mishap you've ever had? I was gunning my Somerset down the newly opened M8 in 1972, uh, just approaching Lang Bank where it narrowed into the road for, in those days, Wood Hall. And uh, you went through Wood Hall and then into Port Glasgow. So there wasn't the dual carriageway. And I'm horsing it down from Bridge of Weir in my um, 20-year-old Somerset, giving it big licks, fantastic. And the, there was a, a screech and a bang. And then she stopped. So I took her out of gear and coasted into that we lay by there just at Finlaston House, just past Finlaston House, just before Woodhall. And um, I was stuck there. Anyway, I couldn't see anything wrong with it. And I got the starting handle out and she wouldn't turn at all. So um, I thought, well, I have to leave it. And a little bit of mugging my hands, but my blue suit and everything. And I stopped and a guy stopped in a beautiful big Daimler, a, a navy blue Daimler with those kind of... Um, lovely dark, dark red seats, sort of oxblood seats, and uh, gave me a lift. And he took me all the way down to uh, Gurk, <coughs> dropped me at the door, and I went back to get the car with a friend, and he said, give me the handle, Scotty. And he took the handle, big friend, great guy, um, six foot six foot tall, became uh, a moderator of the Church of Scotland, and he uh, turned over the car, and he said, I said, well, more than six foot, but six foot seven or something. Turned over the car, and the lug broke off the handle. He said, well, I can't fathom that. Usually when I turn an engine, they turn with alacrity. So then we looked down and saw the big end shell poking out the block. So the big end shell had whipped itself out and put itself through the block and you could just see a sharp corner which was the uh, the corner of the big end bearing sticking through the block and the engine was sea solid. That's my worst mishap. I had an 850 Mini that overheated on the way to Edinburgh. I remember that. Uh, I've been in car sales side of things for many years, Scotty. A guy came in one day with an old Yugo. Uh, all MOT, all bashed. Would you give me a thousand pounds for it? Um, he said, I said, yeah, if there was 700 in the glove box and your caravan was still attached to it. <laughs> Do you ever go to the modern auctions, Scotty? Great day out. Online auctions are lame in comparison. Yes, I do. I go to the motor auctions. I remember a guy for an absolute top of the range luxury car. This thing must have been worth about, I don't know, maybe 40 grand and uh, certainly well upwards of 20. And the guy says, for the car, I won't mention the car, I wouldn't be so basic to do that. <coughs> and he goes, what can we say, 50 for it, 50, 50, 45, 40 to get me away, get me started, come on, she's worth every day of the week, 40. And this guy goes, 13. And the auctioneer fixes him, and the auctioneer was furious. And he goes like this, very provisional. And there were no other bids. Anyway, I watched, and I watched, and I saw the auctioneer come back and go like this. I should have been accepted. So there you are. So uh, snow on the ground, freezing cold February, big auction in central Scotland, 
and a top-of-the-range motor car, £13,000. Having said that, when you get it back, you don't know, she might be boiling up. Uh, can you please play a song? Thomas Pedden says, I'm telling 20 to tell 20. Thank you, Tom. That is appreciated. More sharing, please. Everybody, I shall share as well. Yes, I'll play you a song. <clears throat> Wait till we see. What can I play you? Um, right, we number coming up. Okay, okay. Did you like that? Excellent stuff. Uh, now, did we actually share that? I ask you. I think I did. I think I did. Does this say? No, I don't think I have. Right. Uh, I'll share once more. And if you can all do the same, guys. <coughs> Very important. I've actually only got a couple of minutes to go. I can't believe it. If we still own some of the old bombs we used to drive, we'd all be millionaires. Absolutely, Brett as well, of course. But you don't see it so often. You don't see rust on cars to the extent. I mean, I can remember running things that were almost into powder. Yvonne Cuttle, you say the loveliest things. You say you can pronounce it any way you wish. And give me a lovely big kiss. Bless you all. Uh, do you remember the Fiat Yugo, Scotty? I do, Alistair. I remember all these cars. And the Lada, wonderful Lada did a big four-wheel drive that I used to covet a bit. You see, when you're a student, you covet anything. You know. Well, I know, that's wrong. Covet's the wrong word because in actual fact, one of my great strengths is that I've never coveted anything. So whatever anybody's got, people say, this guy's a millionaire, this guy's can introduce you, he's a billionaire. I say, no, it, it doesn't make any difference to me, you know? I always remember somebody telling me a story. This guy had said to, to, to a big sensible guy, sensible guy like Gordon Sterling there. I can see Gordon Sterling watching. So sensible, big picture of Gordon Sterling there. And um, honestly, the things I have to look at when I'm broadcasting. And uh, I can remember that. Very handsome chap, Gordon. Um, and this, this guy had said to this bloke, he said, he's got a lot more money than you. I think you'll find his bank balance is a lot bigger than yours. And he said, yes, but our graves will be the same size. Oh, that went home, didn't it? Uh, Don't break, you make me cry. I've had loads of cars that are now premium classics. I know. How annoying is it when you're telling somebody about a car you had? And they went, you should have kept that. They're worth a lot of money nowadays. Nicky Graham, I'm telling a hundred to tell a hundred. Nicky Graham, you are a princess. I thank you, a princess. Uh, so there we are. Hi, Scotty, new listener. I used to listen to you on Scott FM. Hello from the Wilson family. Janet Dinky Doo, love to the Wilson family. I say. Alistair King, connection problems, Scotty. Shouldn't have it here. Everything's working well here, Alistair. <clears throat> Never ask a strong apprentice to turn it over. It scratches the doors. Yvonne Cuttle's laughing. I've, I've split it between Cuttle and Cuttle. So I'm calling you Yvonne Cuttle. Uh, there we are. Louise Arrell's watching. Hello, Louise. What an angel. Uh, out in Helen's brother. Dinky-doo. I love your photography. 
Larry Donaldson's watching. Guys, have a look at uh, Louise Arrow's photography. It's outstanding. Quite stunning. So there we are. I remember the friend meeting a chap that had just purchased his first classic Rover Coupe. We had a look at the interior and thought to ourselves, interior looks shabby. He quickly said... <laughs> he was getting it recolonized. We looked at each other and thought he hadn't a clue what he was talking about. I still think about that and laugh. Kenny, you're absolutely right. I remember the guy I said, your interior needs something. He went, I'm getting it recolonized. I said, now what does that mean? Because I knew Connolly Hides, you know. And uh, he said, oh, I don't know. <laughs> and then his, um, there was a, a wee, I can remember, there was a, a wee hesitation in the automatic box taking up the, the drivetrain. So every time it changed gear, I used to throw myself back and forward in the passenger seat and go, Oh, so he's going, Nye. oh, <laughs> just a bit of nonsense. Loved the auctions at the old meat markets at the East End. Yes, I used to go down there. Fantastic. There we are. There we are. What should we say? What can we say for her? What can we say? There we are. <laughs> Wonderful stuff. And then some of them weren't they running. They used to just stall going round and the guys used to all get round and push them back out again. But that didn't mean don't buy the car. That just meant there was something wrong with it. I mean, virtually in those days, if a car was at an auction, it was kind of the last gasp, you know. So you knew there was going to be something needing done. But if you got the car cheap enough, and I bought a beautiful uh, little Skoda, almost new, the little Estelle. And I went in to buy it. My pal said, me, get your hand up quick. And I think I got it for 1,100 quid. And uh, it was virtually brand new. And uh, there was about oh, 5,000 miles on it. I ran it for five years and got 500 trade-in. Anyway, my pal said, I said, what have we bought? He said, I'll show you. And when I looked at it, I said, no wonder it's going cheap. There's no engine in it. He went, the engine's in the back. <laughs> my first car came from the auction, a B-Reg Vauxhall Nova, a lovely shade of brown. Still have it in the collection. They're fantastic. Well, that's a lovely tune, says Yvonne. Did you like that? Yes, I know it's nearly time you're off, Scotty. It's been a pleasure, endearing, outstanding playing, Scotty. Thank you, says Kareem. Scotty should get some merchandise and have a pop-up auction. Be a great laugh uh, for the PayPal. Yes, paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue, all one word. McClue's pies would do well at the Mocha auctions. They would. Uh, morning from sunny Leicester, says Steve Shepherd. Morning, Steve. Dinky do. Scott McClure, have a good day. Dinky do. Speak tomorrow. I have to dash. I'm into injury time. Bless you all. Stay safe and stay fabulous. Stay beautiful and stay you. This is Scotty McClure saying to every single one of you, join me tomorrow at 10 o'clock sharp. Get sharing. Until then, dinky do. Ta-la-la!